Welcome back to the channel. And today we're gonna to be doing a cook across four different skillets here. We did a review on these four skillets, which were the Finex, the Smithy Ironware, the Field Company, and of course, a regular 12 inch cast iron from Lodge. Now we'll do both the cook and the cleanup here, just so that you can see the difference in the whole process and see whether the smooth surface of these bespoke cast iron pans really make them more non-stick and make the cleanup process easier. And of course, I'll leave a link down in the description below if you wanna check out our previous video where we went through all the features and the differences between these four skillets. So with that out of the way, let's jump into this. So first off, we're gonna cook the bacon. So we'll turn our burner on to medium here. And this skillet just went on the stove, so it's not hot. And we'll get our bacon down here in the pan. And when you're cooking bacon, this is how you wanna do it. You wanna start with a cold pan and then let it heat up. You'll slowly start to hear the sizzle. Now what we're looking for here is after a couple minutes, we should be able to freely move the bacon around the pan without any stick. Now just using a fork, we're gonna push the bacon around the pan here and it freely releases. There really isn't any sticking, which is pretty remarkable given this is the first time I'm using this smithy. This is straight out of the box. No extra seasoning added beyond what's in the factory. Now we'll empty out a bit of our bacon grease here and get ready for our eggs. So we'll leave a little bit in the pan. Turn the heat down just a little bit. Hit these guys with a little salt, a little pepper. And now let's see how easy it is to get in under these eggs. Look at that. That was pretty easy. Picked up some of the bacon residual here. That'll add a ton of flavor. Now these are looking done. Come in here. Oh, I lost a little bit of the yolk on that one. Kept it whole on this one. Now for the cleanup, we're just gonna use a little wooden spatula here. Get rid of some of that loose debris. Now the same process for the Finex here. Get some bacon down in the pan. Now we'll see if this releases. Just look at that. Absolutely no stick. I mean, this one's frankly even better than the Smithy, but we've been using this pan for the better part of a year and a half, so the actual seasonings had a chance to build up. Now let's get in here and flip these guys. Oh, I really screwed that one up. That's my fault, not the pan's fault. This one, beauty. You know what, I'm gonna make scrambled eggs out of this guy here. See that, there's no sticking. This easily releases from the pan and you've got a little bit of sticking there, but some minor pressing with your actual spatula and you're good to go. And now for the field skillet. Get the bacon down in here while the pan's cold. Now let's see how this bacon releases here. A little bit of a stick just on this one, but otherwise not too bad. Not much of a stick on this one at all. Now I'll take this off. Bacon's looking great. Now we'll get two eggs in here. All right, let's see how this goes. That was pretty easy to release off of the skillet. And now for the lodge. That released it pretty easily. So did that one. So did that one. Uh, that one kind of broke apart there at the end. So that one was definitely the stickiest of the bunch. Now we'll get this bacon off. Now let's flip these. That was actually a pretty good non-stick surface to be honest. This one's sticking a little bit more.
So now that all our cast iron pans have cooled down, we're gonna start with the smithy here. And we'll do the same process for all of them. We're just gonna take a paper towel, get out any of the loose debris and the residual grease. Then with some hot water, we'll just use a little mesh scrubby like this and get in here and remove any of the debris that was actually stuck on. There we go. And this is now clean. So with that done, we're just gonna let these pans heat up here on the ovens. Now, once these have all dried off and the water's evaporated, we wanna re-season them. We're going in with a little organic flaxseed oil. Now this oil is great at polymerizing to uh, cast iron. So when it's heated, it goes through this effect of essentially joining or bonding with the actual cast iron. So we're just gonna use a few drops here on each of these pans. And it's that residual heat from the pan that's gonna bond the oil to the actual cast iron. So I'll get in here. And then we're gonna to wanna to turn these over and do the same on the other side and the handle. Now you don't have to use flaxseed oil. You can use other neutral oils like avocado oil is a great one. And again, you wanna get all around the edges, the sides, the handles as well. You just want a really thin layer of this oil all over the pan. And this is not only going to actually re-season the pan, but it's gonna protect the cast iron and prevent it from rusting as well. So what's the conclusion from this test here? Well, I think there's two important ones. Firstly, if you take care of your lodge cast iron and you use it regularly over the course of a number of years like we have with this one, you can get it to be almost as non-stick as some of these really high-end bespoke pans. But the second point is these new bespoke pans are almost non-stick straight out of the packaging when you get them. And that really goes to the fact that they've grinded down the surface of the pan so that they're really nice and smooth, as opposed to leaving that sand coarse grind that you get on the surface of the lodge. So it really just comes down to how much time you wanna spend before you actually build up that level of seasoning and make your pan non-stick. Or if you wanna take an angle grinder and a sander to your lodge, you can accomplish that in a couple of hours. And of course, you'll have to rebuild up the seasoning, but there's just some options for everyone. So if you like this video, you should check out the previous one we did where we went through all the features and differences between these four cast iron pans. And if you like this series, give us a like below, leave a comment, let us know your thoughts. If you've used say Griswold, or some of the older cast iron brands. Let us know what you think of those too and how those might compare to these.